you. Again, good morning, Chair Nelson and members of the board. Um, if I could get my slides, Madam Clerk. My update this morning will cover our county's metrics and vaccination status. Assistant CEO Nancy Anderson will follow with the RISE business update. Next. The Public Health Department continues to monitor our COVID-19 cases. Our current data stands. The adjusted case rate per 100,000 per day is one. This rate was adjusted from case rate of 1.1 based on the test per day at 224.4. Testing positivity over seven days is 0.7 and testing positivity in the health equity metric areas is 0.9. So these are really good statistics um, for us to, to um, gauge. Next. Next. We, with regards to our vaccination status as of June 20, June 20th, uh, the percent of eligible Santa Barbara County individuals vaccinated with at least one dose stands at 66.2%. Of that, 57.3 are considered to be fully vaccinated. When we look at the numbers of the total uh, Santa Barbara County population, if we look at, uh, it, it, so we're expanding beyond the eligible, 56% uh, of total Santa Barbara County uh, have received at least one dose. And of that, 48.5% of the total Santa Barbara County can be considered fully vaccinated. To the bar graph on the uh, right-hand side, we're also tracking percent of vaccination by age. So um, as you can see, the zero to 11 stands at zero because there is no FDA uh, uh, emergency use authorization just yet. With the uh, age group 12 to 15, we have 24% are fully vaccinated. With the age group 16 to 29, we have 50% fully vaccinated. With the uh, age group 30 to 49, 50% vaccinated. With the age group 50 to 64, we have 73% fully vaccinated. With the age group 65 to 74, we have 70% fully vaccinated, ending with the age group 75 and above at 75%. So when we look at these numbers, we're seeing that uh, the age group 12 to 15 uh, went up by 7% as compared to last week. So we are making good traction in this age group. Next. Uh, we continue with our mobile vaccination program, and this is where we partner with uh, businesses, community groups to offer vaccinations at the workplace or um, in various locations. Uh, for week 10, we offered 16 clinics uh, running from grocery stores, uh, farmer markets, Juneteenth events. Uh, three were ag-based. Uh, two were in churches and uh, two were community-based organizations, one in a low-income housing and one in Kuyama. So even though we can see that the, the demand for vaccinations has decreased drastically from week five, I am encouraged that during week 10, we are seeing an uptick, uptick in the number of people wanting the first dose. And really hopeful that with together with our community organizations doing outreach and education, that the trend in uh, first doses will continue to increase. Next. So even though we are winding down on our press conferences and briefings, we are still tracking COVID-19. For current data on cases, vaccination, 
variants and so much more, please visit our website at publichealthsbc.org. The information is available 24 seven and um, uh, very informative about how COVID-19 is looking in our county. Next. I'd like to um, end uh, by uh, sharing the infinity healing ceremony that is happening this weekend. So the context is to date, Santa Barbara County has lost 455 community members to COVID-19. Uh, we are inviting everyone um, to join an infinity healing ceremony to honor loved ones lost to COVID-19. The first event is on Saturday, June 26th at noon at Solvang Park. And as you can see, uh, it is an event that uh, that includes a wide array of faith-based um, and community-based leaders. Um, and I uh, uh, wanna share this invitation with you. Um, and that ends my update for this week. Thank you, Dr. Renoso. Uh, are there any questions from the board before we head over to Ms. Anderson? Okay, go ahead, Ms. Anderson. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. We did wanna provide uh, your board and the public with a final RISE update. Um, effective June 15th, the RISE program ended. Uh, this coincides with the governor's uh, beyond the blueprint changes. Uh, RISE signage uh, can be removed. And the temporary extensions to right-of-ways and parking areas uh, through the SBC PEP programs will be extended uh, to the end of the state of the emergency. Uh, at, at this time, we don't know what that date is, uh, but we will keep it uh, uh, noted for the departments, for the uh, businesses that are participating in those programs. In addition, emergency temporary food permits to the environmental health services um, that were issued primarily to wineries and breweries uh, and those types of um, uh, venues uh, will continue until further notice by the health officer. Businesses now revert uh, back to their normal industry regulatory agencies, uh, with the exception of mega events that, that are still um, uh, posted on the state's website. In addition, most California bus businesses also have to follow California Office of Occupational Health and Safety Admi Administration, or Cal OSHA. At this time, we did want to take the opportunity to thank the nearly, or actually more than 50, uh, RISE team leaders and nearly 5,000 participants in our RISE program. Uh, this nearly uh, represented all the industries within the County of Santa Barbara. We truly appreciate our, uh, the cooperation and effort towards compliance and the engagement of all the industries uh, throughout the pandemic. We will continue to keep the recoverysbc.org website updated, primarily focusing on resources for businesses. And that includes uh, for direct business consulting and advice uh, through Economic Development Collaborative, the Women's Economic Ventures, or WEAVE, uh, Service Corps of Retired Executives SCORE. Uh, these have been very active uh, within our community and we'll continue to um, uh, coordinate uh, those efforts with them. We also wanted to pro provide a brief Cal OSHA update uh, that transpired late last week. Uh, the Standards Board uh, approved revised emergency temporary standards uh, late last Thursday, uh, and the governor immediately um, uh, processed an executive order in 921, uh, which made the ETS effective immediately. Uh, that ETS had to be filed with the Secretary of State, which was also done on Friday, uh, so that is now um, official. Uh, the revised Cal OSHA standards are allowing for changes uh, for our county facilities. Uh, physical, di physical distancing signage, stickers, and barriers are all, are all optional and may be removed. Uh, new revised signage has been posted at all of our county um, entrances for face coverings for public entering the building to self-attest, uh, which is uh, required, required by Cal OSHA. Uh, we also will be continuing to provide um, a supply of disposable masks for members of the public who request facial coverings. And we are um, uh, 
Uh, looking forward to July 13th, the Board of Supervisors' next meeting that'll be fully open to the public, and that'll be here at the Santa Barbara Chambers. Just wanted to show the sample signs that are posted outside our facility, indicating that um, those who are vaccinated in the public are welcome to enter our facilities um, without a mask. The Cal OSHA standards also allow changes for our employees. If fully vaccinated, employees have the option to wear a face covering. Cal OSHA requires that vaccine status be documented via vac vaccination card or self-attestation form. We do have some exceptions for employees uh, who are working in custody institutions or other healthcare settings. Not fully vaccinated employees are required to wear a face covering indoors while at a work, shop, work site, and employees may request an N95 mask uh, for voluntary use uh, if desired. Uh, Cal Oster also indicated that no person can be prevented from wearing a face covering as a condition of participation in any activity or entry into a business, and of course that includes county facilities. And that was a very brief update, but we want to make sure that your board was made aware and the public and are happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, thank you, Ms. Anderson. Any questions from the board? I've got a couple. Um, going back to slide 11, Ms. Anderson, I just want a little bit more clarification on our temporary uh, measures for restaurants and wineries and breweries. Um, it says right now, uh, we extended to the state of the emergency as order on the right-of-ways. Um, as we know, the state of emergencies uh, sometimes can go for years. Um, and I'm hoping that at some point we kind of figure out what that looks like and as we move forward and have that discussion. I know the city of Santa Barbara is having that with State Street. I think it's really important for this board to take a look at that. I'm not in a rush to do it, but I want to make sure we have more than enough time to have that discussion as a board prior to ending um, that extension. And that also would go for... Um, our temporary food permits as well. I think that a lot of um, businesses have made significant investments in, uh, in adjusting. Uh, many of them actually like it, and so does the public. So I think that we should be responsive as we exit out of this, maybe having a pathway forward for, for maybe a permanent um, permitting of those uses. And so, um, you know, I just don't want to be caught where we're ending um, the temporary permits and, and requiring them to uh, be delayed and um, you know whatever process we bring forward. I, I think we at least need to have that discussion here on the board. I don't know if ultimately we'll decide as uh, a board majority on what that looks like, but I think that I, I just want to make sure that I get that out there as a, as a, a suggestion on, on my part. Um, so that was on uh, the temporary food permits. And then the other question I have is we open on the 13th how are we going to deal with the masks with the public entering our facility? Um, are we requiring them to show proof of a vaccine before um, they take off their mask? Are we allowing them to self-attest? I understand how we are dealing with that as an employer, but how are we dealing with that with the public? Thank you, Chair Nelson, and I'll start with that last question yeah. first. Um, so yeah, so um, we have created uh, a signage that um, is in compliance with Cal OSHA to allow individuals to self-attest. So we are not going to be enforcing any type of uh, um, entry into our facilities. Uh, they will. It's a public notice, so um, the expectation is that public will acknowledge that, um, make that self-attestation as they're walking through our doors, and certainly if they're needing a mask or don't have one available, we can make one available for them if they are not vaccinated. All right, thank you. And to follow up, I'm sorry, on your first question, uh, in regard to um, public works planning and uh, public health are all looking at those. I think your board has made that um, pretty evident over the past several months that you were interested in some, some way to, to continue those to um, an ongoing long-term basis. So they are looking at that now. 